the American red snapper is under siege. It's one of the most important recreational and commercial fisheries in southern U.S. waters and especially in the Gulf of Mexico, and has been for more than a century. Citing the need to save this species from overfishing, the National Marine Fisheries Service recently proposed extremely long closed seasons that affect the livelihood of hundreds of charter operators and thousands of recreational anglers. These new regulations are based on what many scientists and most all anglers believe are outdated and inaccurate research. Dr. Bob Shipp of the University of South Alabama, recognized as one of the foremost red snapper experts in the world, believes this species is healthy and sustainable and backs it up with his research. Today, we head offshore with Dr. Shipp to learn more about his research and to see firsthand that the snapper populations are robust. Join us now on Sport Fishing Television for Snapper Under Siege. We're on a fish. Whoa! We're here on historic Dauphin Island in Alabama. It's at the southernmost tip that sticks out into the Gulf of Mexico. And we've come to do some scientific research with the University of South Alabama's Dr. Bob Shipp, America's foremost red snapper expert. Dr. Shipp heads the Marine Fisheries Department at the university and has been an expert resource for both Sport Fishing Magazine and this TV show for years. He and his staff of fisheries scientists in the school's Dauphin Island Labs perform the most advanced research on this species of anyone. Fishing with us today is computer techno whiz Jason Smith to help log the data we generate, and an old friend, Captain Sandy Smith, kingfish angler par excellence and resident of Dauphin Island. We're heading to some top secret spots that the university guards like the Secret Service guards the president. So suffice it to say, you will not take any new snapper hotspots from this show. But there are so many snapper spots here that you won't have any problems on your own. All right, Dr. Bob, we've come to one of your top double secret <laughs> research fishing spots for red snapper. And what's our game plan here? Well, our game plan, we're far enough out to where we're in an area where it's not fished that often. And we ought to get some really big snapper here. These places that, you know, if, if you let them rest two or three years, boy, the big snappers show up. So I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't get a lot of 10 to 30 pounders here. And it's closed season, though, so we're going to... We're going to tag we're and release We're here strictly for research. Yep. We're going to tag and release everything. Yep. All right, guys, drop them down. We're using simple whole dead baits on circle hooks with an interesting rig we'll tell you about later. Honestly, though, you can't go very far in these waters without your sounder detecting prime snapper structure. Son of sir, stir them up. Ah! <laughs> ah! Oh my! Oh, ho, ho, ho! Ah! Was... Elvis is in the building! That was a strike in three quarters, dude. I think I'm hooked up. Pound for pound, snappers are almost as strong as jacks in a fight. And this is our first drop, so apparently the feds do have it right. They're just not enough snappers. What a beauty. Look at that. I got it near the top here. What a gorgeous fish. We got a decent one. Yes, sir. We'll put a tag in him. You betcha. All right, let me see this now. She's a beauty. All right, so why are you using two people? One to right and one, one to right. Measure. And we're measuring in what? This fork length and total length. Yeah, but I mean in... Millimeters. 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 All right, so you just put the tag in and give it a little tug, and it automatically anchors. You don't have to put stitches in or anything, huh? That's right, and it'll stay in, and we've had fish that have been out for three or four years, and the tags are fine. Now, when you vent him, you go about two finger widths behind that front fin there in the side and in an angle okay. towards the head. And when you get it in right, you'll hear the air coming out.
We're going to release him and record his condition as he goes over. He's gone. He's gone. Good shape. He's a one. That was a definite one. Yeah. He, he wasted no time getting away. To determine how each fish has handled the tagging process, this released rating system provides the final piece of datum for each snapper. How quickly and strongly did the fish swim away? I've learned a lot. Good go, Dean. All while doing everything possible to limit the stress on the fish. When we come back, I'll tell you about that kiss rig we're using. Sport Fishing Television is presented by Yellowfin, the choice of champions. By Mercury, number one on the water. By Penn, the biggest name in fishing. And by the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. Captain Sandy, you have a very sophisticated but very simple rig that we're using today. Tell us about it. Yeah, Dean, I um, came up with this bottom fishing rig. Of course, I learned it years ago, but most people, when they're bottom fishing, they'll take an egg sinker and put it on their main line. Right. And uh, the downside of that is a lot of times we come out here and we fish spot to spot. And when you go to run somewhere, if it's a little rough, the sinker's bouncing up and down and beats your rod up. And you get to a different depth of water, you need different size lead. So you have to re-rig with the triple swivel rig, I call it. You just take a triple three-way swivel, tie your main line to your rod on one, tie your leader on the other, and then you take a little piece of line, tie a loop in it, so you can just loop the lead on and off very simply. And this way you can change your lead out when you go, when you run to a different spot, you just take your lead off, it keeps from beating your rod up. Right. If you get to some deeper water and you need, some, need a bigger lead for current, you just put a little bigger lead on. Also, if you happen to get a big fish on, you know, a big snapper will bounce up and down. You don't have that lead beating up and down because it'll beat right here on this knot and he'll right. break off. Break the knot. If you happen to get hung up, if you'll use a lighter line on your lead line, it'll snap it break and you can it still off. get your, your fish out. And so anyway, the, the third component comes down to a fluorocarbon leader and it leads to the business end of the rig. A beautiful circle hook. And around here, federal law requires you to use circle hooks. Easy to use, catches in the corner of the mouth, very easy to release. It's hard to believe in truly secret fishing spots here in Alabama waters since the distance between Dr. Bob's spots rarely topped half a mile. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hooked yeah. up? Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Dr. Bob, you sure are showing us how to do it today. Oh, this is a hoss. This is a hoss. We got a belt. <laughs> yeah. Is that low enough for you? Yeah, that's pretty oh, low. Okay, double header. Oh, that's the one. Oh. <laughs> oh. Holy cow. All right, here comes the real contest, Bob. Uh. Oh, yeah, I paid the price on that one. Five, nine, five. Six, four, zero. Okay, six, four, zero. Tag number 8957. These are some strong fish when you consider how small they are. And that they're in a fluid medium. And they can still put that much pressure on it. Okay. Let's put a two on that one. All right. All right, we ready, Dean. Bring him on up. We're going to tag him and release him. So walk him on up here. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Two good-sized snapper. All right. That's a lot of fish. He did eat that, didn't he? She's a beauty. All right, science. Do your scientist thing. While Captain Sandy uses a federally mandated D-hooker to remove the circle hook, 
Jason and Dr. Bob quickly measure the fish, note the data, and surgically implant the tag. As you can see, the process really takes very little time, a big benefit for the fish. And for a computer geek, Jason's gotten pretty adept at implanting the tag in one-handed fashion. Fortunately, you don't have to stitch up the incision. The tag fills the hole quite nicely. Now, Bob, what do you do with these fish if you recatch one? Well, there's a whole bunch of stuff. We can record how much they've grown. Uh huh. Know how much they've moved. And do you have people keep that fish and bring you the tag? Yeah, or we have a the we, tag off. Or the, what? the tag has a toll-free number on it, uh -huh. and uh, we have a little reward system. We send them T-shirts and all that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, we get a we get good returns from people. We got a commercial guy one time apparently found one of our spots and caught about eight of our tagged fish <laughs> at one of our spots. And do you do you um, do you want people to take the fish or just write the information just down where, and let it go? Just write, where they caught it and roughly how big it is. Right. That's so you all. don't care if they take it or no, not at all. Okay. And you know, even if they catch an undersized fish with a tag, they still need to return it. Oh, of course. But uh, we'd appreciate them. Gotcha. Giving us the length and location. All right, let's do this again. That's a good pass. We'll take you inside a fisheries lab and show you some of the incredible technology used to study these snappers when we come back. My name is Captain Sandy Smith. I was born in Orlando and raised in Fort Pierce, Florida. First time fishing in salt water is Cape Canaveral, Florida, six years old with my grandfather. I'm currently single and it's just me and my boy Zeus. I cut my teeth competitive fishing on the SK Tournament Trail for 14 years. I won the Greater Jacksonville Kingfish Tournament in 1999 and over a half million dollars of tournament winnings in my career. I fish a 36 foot yellowfin powered by mercury, have so for the past 10 years and I love it. I currently fish out of Dolphin Island, Alabama where I specialize in light tackle tuna fishing. You just hung into him, Sandy. You still got him? Yeah, he's all right. All right. <laughs> How about that, Bob? Yeah. I think we got a little snapper on here. Got a little one. I think he's legal. Yeah, he might <laughs> barely legal. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, here, here we go. Red, I see some color. Red snapper. He's not huge, but no, he's nice. He's, ain't he's big as the one you caught. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's legal. All right. That's a nice snapper. Let's walk him on up, and we'll put a tag in this okay. one. Okay and release him. The University of South Alabama Fisheries Facility on Dauphin Island conducts dozens of ongoing projects at once in many different areas. For example, oysters constitute a significant industry in this part of the Gulf of Mexico. Environmental impact studies help predict boom and bust situations, and many other fish, both popular and forage species, also demand ongoing research. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Dean. I'm Dean Travis Clark. Back Sean Powers. How do you do? After our tour of the very cool aquarium, also run by the university and open to the public, we entered the Sanctum Sanctorum, the research labs themselves. This right here is an acoustic tag, so it emits a unique sound that can only be heard by these hydrophones. We put the hydrophones out on the reefs or anywhere we wanted to see their movement and then we surgically insert this into the fish's belly. It doesn't affect it at all. It's going to send that sound pulse to those receivers, and then it's going to give us temperature, depth data. And from that, we learn where the snappers move, how much they move, and something about how they spend their day. This is a side scan unit. We tow this behind the boat, and it actually takes an acoustic image of the bottom so we can see the bottom through sound, so we can identify reef habitat, we can see natural structures. We can find submerged wrecks. All of the areas that fishermen like to fish on, we can map, and then we can use those maps to go back and quantify the fish population. Oh, what's this? That's a fish otolith. That's the inner ear bone of a fish, and it's a hardened bone-like structure. You can see if we count the rings just like a tree, we can see periods of fast growth and slow growth. The slow growth represents the winter growth, 
and we can age that this fish lived through at least 27 winters, so it's at least 27 years old. We go through here with a laser and burn a transect through the otolith and analyze the chemistry, and we can tell you where this fish was from because the chemistry in the water affects the chemistry of the bone, and then where it moved. What's the, um, the largest or the oldest snapper that you have had here in your lab? We've aged one at 52 years old, which is the oldest record snapper. Whew, amazing. The University of South Alabama also conducts field trips and classes for visiting younger students. Hopefully it can act as a recruiting tool when students discover how truly cool science can be. What did you do today when you went out? We caught some fish and identified them, and she talked a lot about them. How did you catch them? Did you use a rod and reel or we something else? We used an auto trawl net. Auto trawl, what's that mean? We pull the net behind the boat. Uh -huh. It opens up with the wood planks and the current to the water. When you opened the net on board, what kind of fish did you find? Um, drumfish and squid. Butterfish. Uh-huh. And shrimp. Uh-huh. And that fish. Oh, yeah, a butterfly oh. stingray. And the cum jelly. There's our teacher over there, Mr. Lewis. <laughs> Some teachers will do anything to get out of the office, won't they? <laughs> Absolutely. What a great day. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad you all enjoyed it. And I hope you all uh, pass on your new respect for everything that lives in the sea. The difference uh, in students from the classroom to an environment like this is unbelievable. In a classroom, you're trying to keep them awake. Uh, it's, it's very challenging. When in an environment like this, it's interesting, hands-on, and they get to see it, they get to touch it, they get to feel it, and apply it to their lives. USA scientists spend more time out on the water than in the labs. When we come back, we'll take you offshore and show you another reason why the red snapper population is so incredibly healthy and prolific in these waters. Sport Fishing Television has been presented by King Sailfish Mounts, offering a full selection of world-class release mounts by Chica Lodge and Spa, luring anglers to the Florida Keys for more than 60 years. By Bomber Saltwater Grade, built to dominate. And by Ray Marine, world leaders in marine electronics. Historic Dauphin Island may not be the easiest place to reach, but it sure is beautiful. We stay at the Dauphin House Bed and Breakfast, right on Mobile Bay. It's quaint, and the owners specialize in distinctly southern cooking with a definite Cajun flair. It's clean, comfortable, and lovely. And don't let the bed and breakfast moniker fool you. There's a wonderful cocktail hour every afternoon that often segues into a fabulous dinner. It's just about the most easygoing place we've ever stayed. Thanks, Carol and George, for being such gracious hosts. Dr. Bob, I, I love the Mobile Bay area, and, but Alabama's coastal area is actually pretty small in comparison to a lot of states. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because we have about 4% of the um, shoreline, and yet we catch 40% of the red snapper that are recreationally caught, and there's a reason for that. Many years ago, the state cut a deal with the Corps of Engineers, and they pre-permitted a 1,200 square mile area off Alabama for artificial reefs. Anybody can put artificial reefs out. All the material has to be inspected. You can't put car bodies, you can't put refrigerators, but you can put concrete structures that are made to be artificial reefs. Would you believe that there are over 20,000 artificial reefs in that 1,200 square mile area? In addition to that, we have all these gas and oil rigs have an incredible increase in habitat here. We found something that turned out to be two huge chicken coops just covered with huge red snapper. Everyone that I speak to who fishes, and even most of the scientists that I speak to, all tell me that there are more red snapper today than at any time in recorded history. And yet the government continues to put more stringent catch quotas and limits on red snapper. So much habitat has been created. There's no doubt that there are very likely more red snapper now than ever in history. But the way the law reads, you have to rebuild the stocks to their potential. So when all this new habitat has been created, the potential has been raised, and that's what the government is trying to do. Now, having said that, their models do not have a habitat component to it. So, in my opinion, their models are three or four years behind, 
And until they factor in this increase in habitat, they're gonna be slow to relax the restrictions. The one thing we can all agree on based on our history and today, there are a lot of snapper out here. So listen up, NMFS. We found no shortage of red snapper and released everyone hale and hearty. Perhaps you should pay added attention to experts in the field, like Dr. Ship and his team. Let's see this fish swim away happy. There he goes. Is that a one and in or a two and in? That's, we probably give one, one and, and a half. half. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we even need to catch any more fish today. We've, we've slayed enough. We have yeah. indeed. It's been a good day, Dr. though. Dr. Bob, I can't thank you enough after all these years. It's fabulous to finally fish with you, and you are really very good at what you do. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not just being the TV star. You it's, actually know fish, too. It, well, it's, knowing snapper's pretty easy when you've been working on it for about 20, 25 years. But I guess so. i got to admit, my favorite fishing is surf fishing for pompano. I'd rather do that uh, than anything. A little sand fleas. Sand fleas yeah, and shrimp. Yeah, I love it. I love yeah. it. But this is... That's you know, almost zen. It is. It's almost zen. Well, thank you so much for bringing us along, and, and uh, I look forward to fishing with you again. Thanks to Dr. Bob Shipp and the research team at the University of South Alabama for making this show exceptionally valuable, keeping our viewers informed as to the truth about snapper fisheries. And I thank King Sailfish Mounts for letting our hearing-impaired viewers enjoy our show. And thanks also to Captain Sandy Smith for getting us offshore and back safely yet again. I'm Dean Travis Clark. Join us next time for more terrific fishing on Sport Fishing Television.